if we keep looking at this superior view of the skull, we can see the ethmoid bone. And the ethmoid bone is anterior to the sphenoid bone. And we can see the ethmoid bone right here better. The ethmoid bone has several bone features, including this little triangular structure that looks like a rooster's crest. And consequently, that was named Crista Galli, the crest of the rooster, okay? Now, the Crista Galli is very important because it basically anchors our brain anteriorly. It serves as a point of attachment for the dura mater, which is one of the three meninges that protect our brain. Now, if we look on either side of the Crista Galli, we see a plate that has several little holes in it. And this plate is called cribriform plate. And all these little holes serve as passageways for cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve. When we look at the ethmoid bone from an anterior view, the only part we can see is inside of the bony orbit, right there. Which means that the ethmoid bone also makes up the bony orbit. Now, when we look in this picture, we see that the great majority of the ethmoid bone is hidden behind the frontal bone, the maxilla bone, and some other bones that we'll be talking soon. And that's why when we look at this image, we see the ethmoid bone a little faded. Now, when we look in this zoomed-in image, we can identify the cristagalli of the ethmoid bone, the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, and we see this thing that goes down inferiorly. And this is literally going down, dividing our nasal cavity. And this is called perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. The perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone plus the vomer bone, which is one of the facial bones we'll be talking, form the nasal septum. And you can see them forming the nasal septum right here. So that's the importance of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Now, besides the ethmoid bone being part of the upper portion of the nasal septum, the ethmoid bone makes up the upper nasal cavity walls. The ethmoid bone extends to the sides and forms the lateral walls of our nasal cavity. And extending from each lateral wall, we have the superior nasal concha and the middle nasal concha. And the superior and middle nasal concha, they serve as speed bumps that swirl, they move the air that we are inhaling within the nasal cavity. And that is very helpful to warm, humidify, and clean the air before it goes down our respiratory tract. So the superior nasal concha and the middle nasal concha are bone features of the ethmoid bone. Another thing we can see in this picture is this air spaces that we have within the ethmoid bone. And these are called ethmoid air cells. And these air spaces is what makes the ethmoid bone a very good example of a pneumatized bone.